Hi, today I want to talk about the ESP32, the Arduino environment and how to set up the ESP32 as an access point and also how to use the ESP32 as a web server and how to upload some files via Wi-Fi to the ESP32. And let us first do some definition. What's the difference between the ESP32 as a station or what's the benefit to use the ESP32 as an access point. And if we look at this picture, we see that in a common setup, we use our internet router as an Wi-Fi access point and all our devices are used as a station, Wi-Fi station or STA state. And they connect as clients to our Wi-Fi network and we can use all the clients inside the Wi-Fi network and the router routes if needed all the internet traffic to the internet. And in opposite to this, we can also use our ESP32 as an access point. And in this configuration, we have no access to the internet, but we can use our access point also as a web server and all the net traffic in this small Wi-Fi network can reach all the other stations and also the web server on the ESP32. And there's no need for an other Wi-Fi network. And so we can use this out of the box without any configuration. And we just switch the ESP32 on and we have our access to our Wi-Fi network with the ESP32. So before we go through the code, let's show you the actual demo. I just upload the sketch to the ESP32 and let's look if you have all our setup done. We have used ESP32 as a development module, flash frequency and upload speeds are okay. And here's our port at TTY USB 0. So let's upload the sketch to our ESP32. So we get some warnings, but I think the code runs on the ESP32. So now we are uploading and we can start our serial monitor to see some debug output. And I make the window a little bit smaller so we can also see some other messages. So let's reset our ESP32 and we see our access point is online. Now we connect to our access point. We just, after some time, we have our ESP32 test access point and we can connect to this access point. And I already insert the example password. So after a while we can connect to our ESP32 and we can see the connect information. So we see that our client now gets a new IP address and also we have our IP address from our ESP32. This is this 192.168.4.1. So, and we can put this in our web browser as an address and we see we get a connection and see some kind of website. And the only thing we can do is search for an image and then upload the image to our ESP32. So let's do this. And I have prepared some demo images, maybe this BMP image, and we can upload the image to our ESP32. And then the ESP32 should show the image. And on the image, there's a hidden link to our start main page and I can press this and upload another. So maybe we try this small image and the image is uploaded and print back to our web browser. So maybe another logo. And let's try also a color picture, maybe this JPEG. And you see also color images are uploaded and also downloaded again. But unfortunately there's a small error and 
if the picture is too big, there have to be some limit inside the library from the ESP32. So the ESP32 just crashes and I have no clue why big images are not displayed in my setup. Now let's go to the code. First we do some setup for some feedback and some status lines and also an icon display for our web server. And this is where we define our the name of our access point and also the passphrase and we set up some variables. So let's go into the setup function. So we start by defining our serial interface and do some debug output and this is the only line we need to start our access point. We call the soft AP function and just put here our SSID and passphrase and the channel we want to use and also if our network is hidden or we fully broadcast our SSID into the air. And then our access point is online and then we start our web server on the given port and we define this here with port number 80 the unencrypted web server port and here we have some functions for our websites the upload website is here defined then we have our icon website this is this one and also website how the image is printed and the whole image is get from an in image buffer and then we just print out the image buffer to the connected HTTP browser. Then we have also a thank you page and last but not least our loop functionality with all the state machine lines that we need to upload an image. So first we check if there's a client listened to our server. If so, we do this while our client is connected and if there are some data transfer from the client to the server, we check all the given information in this loop. So we print out some messages, then we read the bytes that would send it from the client, then we do some checking. If we are in the state that we receive the image, then we put the image into a buffer and there are also some messages we have to check with the HTTP. There are some boundaries that are defined for our image and if we are in the state that our image is transferred and so on then we switch the state to get image and if there is a carriage return we receive an HTTP request. So maybe this is the request for our main page. This is the request for our logo image. Don't have to be BMP but, but for easiness I have defined this as logo BMP. Then if we get a request for our icon or we get a post request with our uploaded images and so on. And if we get the boundary or this is the code which starts the image boundaries for the post message and this is inside the boundaries. If we get an image content type, then we get can receive and check if our content type is, a, is an image and what kind of image is this a BMP image or JPEG or PNG and what have you and so on. Then after checking all the states from the HTTP request, then we check if our state is some main states so we can print out the HTTP formulas like our upload formula or the thank you formula. Or we can also print the image or the icon for our web server. And that's it. So if you have some suggestions or ideas how to fix the issues with the upload size of the image, please write some comments. And today you can also win another analoglamp.com ESP32 development board or module giveaway. Just read the terms and conditions in the video or inside the description. So thanks for watching today and hopefully you learned something and enjoy the video. Please write some comments, give me a thumbs up and as always I wish you a nice day. See you next time. Bye bye.